we'll do a quick recap of we're not calling it conference finals. We're calling it semifinals series between Montreal and Vegas. Yeah, I'd say Stanley Cup semifinals because it's not true conferences this year. It's yeah, I just, we just call them. I think most people call them semifinals. This so year. semifinals series. So Montreal beat Vegas in six games. Uh, kudos to our Terry Lekkinen for getting the game winner in game six in overtime, like everyone thought. Uh, and then uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning defeated the New York Islanders in seven games, which is a really tough way for your season to end if you're the Lightning. Uh, giving up just one goal in game seven against the Lightning, but it's a shorty and you don't score any goals. So that sucks if you're the Islanders. But we, we get a Montreal Tampa Bay final. Um, all right, none of us are surprised. I guess the Montreal beating Vegas is surprising in retrospect, but any quick thoughts on the, comp- the semifinal series? On uh, paper, I mean, yeah, on paper, it's an upset. The Montreal yes. Vegas, because Vegas was a two seed going into the playoffs, and Montreal technically is the 18th seed in the whole NHL, and that would put them out of the playoff picture. Um, however, this year, because of how the conference lined up, it um, they managed to sneak in. And you know, to, again, they started the season. The Habs started the season nine one. They were looking like they were going to be the best team in the North Division, and it's just yeah, they've they had some injuries, and now everyone's kind of getting back and getting healthy and. Yeah, good for them. I picked Vegas to win the cup, and man, the Montreal Canadiens still sure ruined that. So it's a uh, it's a tough way for Vegas to get eliminated. It's also tough a little bit if you're like the Toronto's and Colorado's, where oh god, like, yeah, like Toronto gets eliminated by Montreal. We we obviously discussed that, but Colorado, you lose to Vegas, and then Vegas goes and loses loses to Montreal. So that that's a little bit of a slap in the face too. I think if you're the Abs. Um, so this is kind of our Stanley Cup finals preview. Uh, we're previewing the finals. We got a lot. We're, mo- we're mostly talking about finals. We'll talk about some other hockey stuff, but it's mostly the finals. So I guess the first question I have, are the Habs really Canada's team? This, this Is Canada behind the Montreal Canadiens? Uh, I'll start with Rab first because Rab roots for a fellow Canadian <laughs> team. Uh, are you pushing for Canada's team uh, route. Yeah, no, I am. Really, uh, I don't want Tampa to win, to be honest. That's it. There's not really much to it. It's more so I, I also, and I guess the second reason is because Carey Price and, I mean, even Weber deserve a cup. That, yeah. Those two are my, my, my main reasons as to why I'm cheering for them and why I assume many or many people are cheering for them. I think just Carey Price is such a likable figure. Yeah. And, I mean, he's the best goalie of the generation on – like the only one who'll even even come close to him, in my opinion, will be like Flurry or Vasilevsky. Yeah, and again, I agree with Raph there too. Is that you know Tampa won last year, and you know again, would it be cool to see them go back to back? Sure, it hasn't been done. It's only been done once since two thousand. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't mind Patrick Maroon. I don't want to see him three peat though. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, and again, back to um, Ian's point about the Islanders losing in Game Seven. Like that was all Vasilevsky. So. Again, he put he stood on his head, and he's gonna have to do it again against the Canadians. Um, yeah, it's I'm with Rav too. I, the Canadians, the Canadians, Canada's first official um, team since the NHL started in 1917, and um, yeah, they're I don't know. I I root for them. Go Montreal, I guess. Le Habitants. Yes. Uh, um, I'm pushing for Montreal because I'd like to see Kerry win a cup. Weber. Yeah, not quite to the same extent, but I, I still like to see Price win the cup. It's funny having the debate about Canada's team because now people are just like, well, actually, Canada's team is Team Canada. Like when they play at the World Championships and the Juniors, it's like, okay, you're kind of ruining the exercise, though. Hey, you're, yeah, no, I'd rather cheer for Price than freaking Mangiapani and Brown. I'm sorry. Darcy Darcy Kemper is not as fun to root for than Carey Price. No, uh, I guess Michael DiPietro have to root for him because he's a Canucks. Oh, there you go. Yeah, true. Um, Max Comtois, Adam Henrique were two key cogs on that World Championship team. All right, but, fine. I will say Troy Stetcher. I will. I will okay. mention Troy. Yeah, Stetcher. we all like Troy. Troy boy from Richmond. Um, oh, yeah. So I guess the question, because Montreal is going to be the underdog once again, like in every series they've been a part of. Uh, how does Montreal win this series? Scott, I'll go to you first. How do the Habs win the series? One of Montreal's advantages over Tampa Bay is, is their depth. 
yes, Tampa Bay's depth is very good. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that Montreal's got four lines I can all score. I don't really trust the Johnson Maroon line to score against any of Montreal's defense, to be honest. And again, I think to, more to the depth of Montreal is that sure. Again, Tampa Bay's got Hedman, they got Sergachev, but they're missing Sir Cher- And I think they're missing another defenseman as well. Um, but Hedman, I was going to say Hedman's not 100%. And that's, that's to my point as well, is that Tampa's defense is kind of hurting where Montreal's defensive core is super solid. And they still have Romanov who hasn't even, who's barely played. He's played like a couple games in the playoffs. So fact is like, I think Montreal's defensive, if our overall depth is better, but it'll come down to star power and what Kucherov can do for Tampa Bay, personally. Rav, uh, how does Montreal win the series? Um, I think Scott really hit the the depth part pretty well. It's they have four lines who can score, and I mean they they play really well two way as well. Like Suzuki, Suzuki is also very underrated as a two way player. I think he he can even become like close to a Selkie level, maybe not quite like as good as Denault defensively, but like a really good two way forward that you can have. Um, I guess another thing is like with the depth is that is they, they do have like certain players that can fit in multiple spots. Like Armia, I think he's on COVID uh, protocol right now. They just so, announced it this morning. Yeah. He's on COVID protocol. Evans was playing in his spot. So, I mean, it's good to see him back obviously because that injury looked brutal when, he got he got hammered by uh what's his name Shifley. He got decked by Shifley. That was a brutal hit. <laughs> I'm not going back to that one, but yeah, I mean he's if he's back, like he he's a good player. He can fit on that line. I mean, for for that line, you don't really need scoring. You just gotta like get in, get out, and make sure they don't score. That's mainly their job. You really, but it's nice to have I guess Stall and Perry on that line because those guys. I mean, they've scored 40 goals both of them multiple times. So. I don't know. I, I think they like. I think they can get by this team, Tampa, because they've. I mean, they got they got by Vegas and Toronto. I mean, I don't know what Winnipeg was doing, but they got by them too. But yeah, I guess the defensive thing. I, I want to see what they do with. I guess the bottom pairing too, because I was. They got They're gonna have to roll three lines against this team because they're not gonna be able to go back and forth with. I. I don't think. I don't know if Sherratt, Weber, Edmondson. And Petrie can just roll against like Kucherov, Point, Palat, all these guys. It's it's going to be difficult for them. So, you know, you might. I, I this is a point where you might actually have to take Gustafson out of the lineup. Maybe do Merrill, Kulak if you want to go full all out defensive. Yeah. Or I don't know. I, I I don't know what you do for that bottom pairing because that's that's a weird thing, weird thing that I was looking at. Um, I don't know. Gustafson again. He's worked ever since I said he wouldn't work. So I mean, he also works. Yeah. He's, I would say he's also been a key part. He's been the power play quarterback. Yeah, so. I mean, that's the one thing I've always been like. Uh, that's why I always uh, – the guy is an elite, like, puck-moving defenseman. He yeah. just he just has a lot of mishaps. But besides that, the guy is lethal on the power play, and that's the reason why their special teams have been so good, like, and especially the power play. And that's, their penalty kill is amazing. It's like 40 straight or something. Yeah. They've, they've, that, I think that's been the biggest difference. The special teams has been automatic for the Canadians. and power, Like, both – obviously, penalty kills. Like, yeah and Ve- like for Ve- not to go back to vegas all right not to go back to vegas but like they got to switch that up like i said that last time like something has to change with that power play because or, or that whole special teams unit because that's uh you can't have guys like that on your team like stone and all like you know you got a good defensive core and these guys aren't putting up i mean the def- defense did really well that series but the f- top six scored two goals it was just smith and patch ready I was, I was going to say two things. One, if you're Vegas, Alex Petrangelo cannot be your biggest offensive threat. As much as like I like Petrangelo, and I as think good he's a good as he player, is, right? Yeah, you can't. He can't be your best offensive threat if I, you're Vegas. Like Pacioretty has to score more. Like the guy was honestly like that guy was playing like a top ten winger, top ten left winger <laughs> during the regular season. Mm-hmm. And then you know he comes out. In the, I mean, he came out in that round. And I mean, that's that's the thing with uh, Montreal. They. They got guys that can do like lock you down, man. You don't you don't expect it. That Lekkinen, Denol Gallagher line played amazing that whole series. Like Gallagher, if you look at his stats, obviously like just his scoring, he hasn't scored much at all. Like at at, at like at any pace the whole playoffs, he's just been. But if you watch the games, he's been everywhere, and the guy is a dog, dude. Well, he's a heart and soul of that team. I think that's you know again cliche as well, but he's such an important piece on the Canadians and. Like Raf, to your point is that he is, yeah, he's not putting up the numbers, but his, you know, his value to a team is yeah. so high. You just don't, you don't see it on the on the on the scoreboard or in the in on like 
Yeah, um, that's exciting. And, but, and same with yeah, same with like Kakani. I mean, the guy's young, but he's he's gonna. I think he'll be fine. He'll be he can be a he'll be a good top six forward. I think in the future too. Um, he's he's someone who I he could also become like a decent like two way like playmaker kind of player. That's what I've seen him to be. But I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of guys that team I could see like in the future become even better. I feel like. I don't know what you do with like Tatar and the, like, cause I feel like that's a guy that's like so good and he's on the bench. I doubt he'll make, he'll get any time anymore. Like you don't really want to put a guy in the finals that you haven't played since what game? Barring, it, barring an injury though. I will say if someone gets knocked, if someone gets injured in. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, in, maybe Tatar, I, they weren't using I I don't think Tatar was on the line with uh, what's the stall and period at all during practice. I think it was just Evans and he was in a, like a contact jersey so like he was he was playing like in full practice so i think he'll most likely be in next game or like i don't know you might i don't see who else <laughs> you get in michael fro league or something and you throw i don't know you or go you go deep it the- comes back from covid protocols hopefully sooner yeah than- i think i think he'll probably i know he's not traveling i think to vegas so that's game one and two but i think game three he could be back i, I He's had a rough season, obviously, with the, the Myers hit, and then he got COVID in March and got vaccinated, and now he's back on COVID protocol again, which is brutal. But, I mean, the guy, is, he's persevered through a lot, and he's the big part of that team. No kidding. So my my thing for this series, um, you, we touched on it a little bit earlier, it's the Tampa power play versus the Montreal PK, where Tampa Bay's power play – it's pretty legit. It's a seriously good power yeah. play, like both units. And you go up against Montreal's penalty kill, which has been un fuego. I don't know what that is in French, but pretty hot. I don't know what that's it's like. Spanish. That's Spanish. Well, no, in fuego, I know it's French, but I don't know what the French or, or Spanish. Uh, in, in fuego is Spanish. I don't know what the French equivalent of that is, unfortunately. But you know what I mean. Like Montreal's PK is very hot. And they like to capitalize on like the quick turnovers and, you know, quick two on ones the other way and capitalize on those. I don't know how many of those Tampa Bay will be offering, but if Montreal can still get scoring chances from those odd man rushes the other way, shorthanded, it might, it, it could be a closer series. It might be the difference in this series. So yeah, the, the, the rushes will definitely be a big part of Montreal's game. Cause that's how they, I mean, that's how they got by Vegas. That's yeah. really, that, cause if you look at, if you watch the games, it was, like Vegas had much more zone time overall, I think, in that whole series. But the rushes, I mean, the Lekkonen goal was off a rush, you know. I was gonna say the, how they won the series with off an odd man rush. Goal. So I like could just show how, like, I guess that like brought it all together the way they were winning. I mean, and also it's just like it was just a typical hockey play where it's like, oh, goalie makes a great save, like uh, on that shot. I forgot who it was. It's either McNabb or Martinez. I think it was Martinez. Shot. Shot it, yeah. Martinez blocker yeah. save, yeah. and it goes the other way. And I mean, yeah, when Lekkonen ended it. Um, yeah. Also, shout out Alec Martinez, who apparently played the whole postseason on a broken foot, I think it was. Dude, and he played good, too. That and he was good. really good. I, I'll, I'll pull it up, but I'm pretty sure like he had a, a significant injury that he was That was a, that was a big goal he scored. It's probably the biggest of his career. Uh, oh, the tw- well, the one – no, I'd say the one in 2014 is big. Nah, that's, yeah. That was, yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> Alec Martinez played through broken foot in the playoffs. Oof. That, I mean, the guy is – yeah, the guy's a beast. Skate more than 22 minutes a game on a broken foot for over a month while blocking a playoff leading 72 shots. That's crazy. Um, so pretty much we kind of talked about how Montreal might win this series. Do we think Tampa Bay has any weaknesses? Is it the health of maybe Hedman, their lack of depth? Like I mean, Cernak is their like main shutdown defenseman with like Hedman not being 100% really. Mm-hmm. So to lose him has been, I mean, that's like, that's a big part, but also, I mean, they, they won one, nothing. They, they didn't allow goal of Luke Shen there and Luke Shen scored. I'm pretty sure. And the he's game, going, like, he's going game five. Yeah. I mean, like, like that just shows like the guy hasn't played at all. And like, even like, and he played all last year too. When, when they won the cup, like the guy's a champion. <laughs> it's good. Like they, they have so much good depth on the team and it's worked out. I think they still have. I don't know if Cal Foot's on the team or. I don't yeah, know he's, he, he's either he's kind of on the bubble. He's in probably on like the taxi squad. Yeah, but like he yeah. can he could come in too. Like you know, you got these guys that like he he's a top six defenseman on a lot of teams, and you know, so I mean, it, it's uh it's gonna be difficult for Montreal to get by that defense and just. I, I think the forward core like defensively is 
like relatively solid for Tampa, but I think Montreal has an upper upper hand on that just because I don't think I think most of the the, the forward core on Tampa is more offensive. But again, the defense on that team with McDonough, Sergachev, Sergachev for Drouin trade that that doesn't look too good now. Obviously, with Drouin not really playing, I think he's I he's, a, he's away on personal leave, personal right? reasons. Yeah. yeah, but like uh, even before that, like the trade was brutal because like Sergachev really you could like Sergachev could be a top two defenseman on 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 Detroit. For yeah. example, yeah, I'd be, I'd be I'd be cool with a Sergachev. Sergachev Hronik. Her, Sergachev Ronick, Sergachev Stetcher, Sergachev Cider. That'd be, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Cider is coming next year. That's going to be nice. Be nice. Um, Scott, do you have any weaknesses for the Bolts coming into the finals, back second finals in as many years? Um, health health of the team. Again, this is their second run in uh, tw- two years. And, you know, condensed schedule this year. Bob- bubble last year, which was also condensed schedule. I'm worried about the health, especially if Hedman, if he's got issues, because um, he logs a lot of minutes and he's going to have to log a lot of minutes, especially against the Suzuki to fully Caulfield line and against, you know, against, well, frankly, any line on that team because Montreal just rolls them. Um, if, is Kucherov healthy? Is he, was he back for game seven? I didn't actually watch game seven. But, uh, he did play in game seven and he, he, he looked fine to me. Uh, he didn't. Re- I mean, there wasn't much going on that game. I felt like it was just kind of back and forth, and then the, at the end, it was just the Islanders trying to score and they got a few good chances. But no, yeah, for sure. I, I, Kucherov, he's gonna. The guy is lethal. He's gonna be fine. I think. I don't think there's any issue with him. I, there might be some like lingering injury, but like at this point, guys are every guy's every, playing. Everyone's yeah. hurt. Yeah, everyone's hurt in some way. I think it's you asked about weaknesses, and the the thing is, like, it's tough. Tampa's so good, and they're eighteen million dollars over the cap. But again, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, um, we Vasilevsky's health as well. Again, he's another second. Like I said, another run in two years, and it's the X factor for the series is going to come down to who's better, Price or Vasilevsky. And yeah, that's uh, I think that's the main thing because that's the realistically. I think if you ask any player, like I, I saw a thing where it's like. I think most people think Vasilevsky's the best in the world, but I've seen like every year I see videos of the players saying like who's the best. Like someone asks them who the best, and it's usually always Carey Price, because I think it's it's different playing against Carey Price than it is Vasilevsky, because you don't really have the star-studded defense on Montreal as you do on on Tampa, really, with like Sergeyev, McDonough, and all those guys. Um, but yeah, I guess it does come down to the to the goalkeeping. Um, the other thing is just scoring, like or even I guess the trying to stop Tampa from scoring because I'm pretty sure the fifth, let me go to the stats. I have them here. I think the fifth leading score on Tampa would be the leading score on Montreal in points. So, I mean, that just that alone, you got to stop those guys from scoring Tampa, which I think Montreal is capable of. I don't know if they can do it over the course of seven games. Uh, but yeah, it's not that I don't think Montreal can score. I think it's the fact that Tampa will just overwhelm them if if Montreal is going to take like a goal fest instead of like locking them down defensively. Well, we, I was going to say, Scott, I think we talked about it before. Or maybe I was chatting with my dad about it, about how Steven Stamkos, ridiculously good player. Yeah, sure. Maybe the fifth best player on the lightning. Yeah. Like that, the, like the lightning are just oh, yeah. so good. And he's like the Dark fourth death. or fifth yeah. best, fourth or fifth best player on the team. Cooch like point, Cooch point had been and, uh, and Bass. Yeah. In no particular order, I would. I mean, everyone can. You could argue different orders for all five of those guys. You could say, yeah. you know, it's up in the air. Like anyone will have a different. Shout opinion. out Kalorn too. That guy's a yeah, Kalorn. Man, he is so underrated. He's a, it's funny. It's insane how like he's he would be the leading scorer on the other team, Montreal, by three points. Like that's like this guy is good too. And another thing, you know, about the whole Tampa Bay roster, and I talked about you know their lack of depth earlier. I think I was more referring to. Their, la- their depth not being able to score. They're yeah, because uh, yeah. you're not really tr- trying to get trust in Ross Colton and like those guys to score. I mean, yeah. I talk about depth. I mean, I guess what's his name did score the game winner yesterday, Yanni Gord. Yanni I mean, Gord, he, got, yeah. he gets yeah. paid a good amount. He's a good player. but He is a good player. And that, that's the thing, I'm, you know, but to, my, to, our, to my point more is like these are all guys that played in Syracuse, you know, Kaloran, Palat, um, Gord, Sorelli for a time, um, Cal Foot, you said Rav. You could even Look at Jan Ruda, Eric Chernak, all these guys. They're not free agents. They're draft picks of Tampa Bay. Yeah, and they all came up. Like, these guys, yeah. like, that, that, I mean, 
A lot of it's because Steve. I mean, the point thing was from Steve. He moved up, like Steve Eisman moved up one single pick. He gave a, I think it was the 80th overall pick and a seventh rounder to move up to the 79th just to get point. And I mean, you don't, who moves up one spot in the third round? Cause at that point, you're like, if you just wait another pick, he's probably going to be there. Cause everyone's got, everyone's um, draft uh, scouting is all different. Their draft board is all very Yeah. But like, I guess, yeah. like Steve's eyes are that's fucking amazing, man. Honestly. Yeah. Gives me hope as a Red Wings. Fan. Yeah. <laughs> you should. Uh, real. Look at, you know, all the draft picks the Wings are stockpiling now at this point. Uh, players to watch slash potential different ma- difference makers in this series. Uh, Rob, I'll start with you. Do you got a player to watch or a uh, difference Kalorn, maker? Kalorn, I think Palat, because I, I wouldn't say it's underwhelming just because he, I mean, I think it's because the fact he's had really good regular seasons in the past, but I think Palat can really turn it up too. Um, for Montreal, it's always, I think it was always Armia for me. Cause I mean, the guy's skilled, he was taken, I think, you know, as a, a lottery pick, I think it was 11th Buffalo in 2011. But I mean, I don't know if, once he comes back, hopefully soon, I think he can be one. Um, I mean, P- Corey Perry is their fourth leading scorer. So I guess that's another guy you can, uh, the veterans, I think the veterans might have to step up a bit in here. Cause, uh, I don't know if the young guys can really carry, carry these guys in the, in the final against that team so stall perry i mean they got stall at the trade deadline for this reason for for the veteran leadership so hopefully he can uh, turn it up uh scott players to watch potential different makers in the stanley yeah, cup finals. Philip Denol, um he and his line are gonna have, if they can shut down kucherov point Palat, i think the canadians won the stanley cup and it's simple enough they, they're the the three of them kucherov point Palat. You don't. I don't know how you stop them. To be honest, there's there's not many ways to do it. You um, just hope to contain them. <laughs> that's the thing, and that's what they're gonna have to do. If you get in Montreal, can't take penalties. If they're gonna take penalties, they're gonna be dead in five games. It's not gonna be pretty. But if yeah, they, even with their penalty off, kill, I don't trust them. That's, not against that, that power that's play. That's kind of my point. Because again, they haven't really seen a potent, potent power play since. Well, not. In not this postseason. Not this postseason. Like post-season. Toronto was really shaky all year. Don't Vegas is on another level, and like Winnipeg didn't do anything. So this yeah. is like the first like real challenge they're gonna see, and it's a it's probably the realest challenge they're ever gonna see. <laughs> like maybe Colorado would have been one, but like like Tampa and Colorado like low key are just interchangeable. <laughs> At this point, yeah. Well, it, it would you know, again in hindsight, in, looking back, it would have been one hell of a Colorado Montreal series. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. would Quebec versus Montreal. That would have been big. Yeah. So, I don't think we, if we mentioned his name yet. I have to talk about Cole Caulfield because that dude rocks. Yeah. That yeah, dude scored it. That, that dude scored as many goals in this the past round as Vegas forwards did. Um, I think he scored more than Vegas forwards. If I'm I, I know as the top, he scored double the top six forwards in that series. Yeah, and pretty much, just the kid rocks like. It, instead of worrying about you know what can you know what might he be able to do or what he doesn't have like with the size and physicality, it's like no, the dude just scores goals for you. Yeah, that's, I that's mean, it. he's just a such a pure goal scorer. It's it's amazing to watch. It's and, it's. I just imagine. I think I've always thought about like this, even it is draft like draft year when like yeah, I think he had seventy two goals or something that one he's played in sixty four games or something, but yeah. It, like uh what was I gonna say yeah imagine if this guy had like even more height imagine like this guy's lethal at this like at, like five seven if he was six feet he would have been first overall pick oh yeah he would have been that's and i don't get how 14 teams including my team and my and, team and, and i mean what team. was it your pick was yeah i guess all so we, we took cider cider's not bad pod cold is a bad. Secrets. His Zegris isn't bad. I guess we got away with it, but I guess maybe that, cl- like, that class is so loaded, but it still yeah, makes you wonder yeah. with, with Caulfield scoring yeah, so many even, goals. In a even, I still think Hughes and Kako is fine. I, I think, you know, like Philly, you take Cam York with like, I think you have Provorov Sanheim. I don't know if Cam York was the really right decision there. Yeah. Um. There's a, there's a lot of teams that I felt like could have definitely Used them even the Canucks. I, I don't mind Pod Coles, and I just have we have to see him. Same with uh, your guy too, Ian. We still have to see him. I see guess him at the, the, the at the NHL level. Yeah, right. Like, but like from a, like I think Cider won Defenseman of the Year in the SHL, right? Yeah, in the SHL as a nineteen year old, and and that yeah, like just to, like those. It's not a that league's a tough league. Is ex, ex NHLers in that league, and then Nin- nineteen twenty year old. Excuse me. Yeah, 
pod put a, uh, pod Coles in is pretty good in the KHL too. I don't know. We have to we have to see. But and and Zegers obviously with Team USA Zegers this past year, a he's, beast, he, man. He, he like his team situation is obviously not great, but still between San Diego and Anaheim, still yeah. putting up good he's stats. Yeah, he should be. Him and Jamie will definitely be up on the first team next year on on the NHL team. Oh, full, full time. They're yeah. they're there. They and gotta be. The Ducks are gonna have some other young guys too coming up, but that's that's a conversation for in a couple months. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Who wins this series and in how many games? I do. You want, I do you want me to start. Do you want yeah, me to let's, say? Let's hear your your thoughts first, big guy. I am gonna take the Habs to win in six games. Nice. Uh, I'm also taking it as just a pick that I hope happens. I'm not totally upset if Tampa Bay wins because I think Tampa Bay is turning into a bit of a heel, turning into like the Trey Young villain that we're seeing in the NBA right now. And I think that's good for the league. I think the league needs that. Not everybody can be, you know, cool. And, oh, look at these guys. These guys are great. Like, you got to have some villains. You got to have some people for people to hate, for fans to hate. And Tampa Bay can be that team. Um I, I just really want Carey Price to win the cup. I, it doesn't matter if Montreal wins as long as Carey Price gets the cup. That's what's uh, important to me. Do you but. ever think he, he leaves that team or at all to like go somewhere I, else? I've talked about him going to Vancouver because he's from BC, obviously, and the Canucks goaltending situation has been – like obviously Markstrom's been good. I think it's been bad in the past, but I think but, I think the Demko thing to get him for locked down for five years has definitely like straightened it out a bit. And that's just it. Like in five years from now, as kind of um I don't know how to describe it, as kind of a well, you're available and we might need a goalie and you're from here. Like not so much of actually that would have to be like an insane trade where like realistically Tampa or Tampa, sorry, Montreal would have to probably carry half his salary for a few yeah. years for like, like that it, big contract so it would be a it would be an insane trade with a lot of like little nitty-gritty things such as like the the salary cap salary cap and all that i'll just say i think that's the only other t- if price ever plays for another nhl team which probably he won't i think it's vancouver i can't yeah. see him playing for any any other nhl team yeah. outside of vancouver yeah I don't but me either but i got montreal in six uh scott who do you have I'm going to say Tampa Bay in six, but I really hope I'm wrong, to be honest. Um, I, it'd be great to see Montreal win another cup. It'd be great to see a Canadian team win a cup. I just think that the league the league needs that, too, speaking about things, you know. Yeah, Tampa winning would make them a, quote, villain as a team that, you know, oh, we got to get over these to beat these guys to get to the... I mean, yeah, it's. Like, I'd even consider it, like, you could argue it as a modern-day dynasty just because you're not going to really it, see dynasties such as, like, you saw yeah. the Islanders kind of I, thing in- I had this conversation with my dad. I think you need to be to win three to be considered. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just because I call it a modern day one because you really it's it's so hard to win three, especially in hockey. Yeah, and in, in the NHL, it's almost like impossible. I consider Chicago in my head. I consider yeah. Chicago during that phase, like twenty twelve to whatever to whatever they won their last one, uh, a dynasty in my I'd head. Say that, I agree. I'm with you. And there. but like even this one, like. 2019, they had the best season, like one of the best seasons ever. I know, like, Panarin fucked them. I'm sorry, that's essentially what they did. But then, but they won the cup last year. And then this year, they're like on the verge of it. So, I mean, if they win this year, I, I in my head, that's a dynasty to go from the best regular season to yeah. cup and another one, right? True, especially through all these times. And you know, I know, and throughout the time and maintaining the whole, like, essentially the same core throughout it, not losing many guys, right? Like, True. even like improving in a sense, too. With yeah. like Coleman, to get Coleman, and that guy's good. That guy's a good player. It's a first round pick to give up. Yeah, man, that, that's a that's a good team. That's a good team. So who I are you like taking? First, yeah, I was gonna say who are you taking to win? Uh, Montreal in seven. I think Montreal gets it in seven games if they were to win. Um, I don't know. I think they can. I think uh, my in my head like the games I feel like are gonna go as such as like Tampa win will win the first one. I think it'll just be a bunch of splits in the four in the first four games. They like they'll split it, and then I don't know. I guess I feel like Tampa will win game game five, but Montreal has been so resilient they'll win game six back in Montreal, and then game seven. Honestly, I think game seven could if it goes to that point, it will just go. It'll just be a, the same thing as the Islanders thing. It'll just yeah. be a one nothing game, and it's whoever not, scores wins. This is that's this series is. has a setup of being a David versus Goliath, and it actually an interesting classic. I think that's got it's got the the aura kind of of that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. yeah. If it was, say, Vegas-Tampa, like, okay, it's two juggernauts, the best team's going to win. If yeah. it's Vegas, 
the Islanders, like, great. It's a good series, too. Islanders, Vegas, like, or... Um, yeah, in a, in a sense, I even consider it, like, close to, like, a St. Louis-Boston thing, like a 2019. Almost. Because, yeah, like, you got, the, you got the guys... I mean, St. Louis is bottom of the league, and Montreal was... I mean, Montreal started off the team, like, like started off the year really good. I remember saying, like, these guys just peaked early. And that's and they did for the regular season, at least. Yeah. I was right. And then, obviously, I don't know, the playoffs have been something else. But it's kind of a thing where you got guys that, like... You know, I mean, it's, I felt bad for Barzal when he was talking about like, you know, how much, how many, how many more times is Andy Green and like, you know, Bailey really gonna make it to the finals? Uh, like that's and he was talking about that and how is that? I also don't think it's. <laughs> I'm just going on a fucking run right now with like, on a tangent, but like, you shouldn't be really asking guys questions right after they lost. But like, I feel like that's a brutal way that Adele talks to people. Is that, is that true? Like, do you think that like? Um, like right after a like the big loss, like you're just telling, like, oh, I know it sucks, but like, how do you feel? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I don't. Well, I don't know if we should also be do like my thing. This is my prediction. I don't know if this is actually going to happen, but yeah. I, I I believe by the end of this decade that the post game media scrum is just going to be gone because I feel like all I these don't mind. all all these interviews in the future are just going to be podcast interviews or guest appearances or the Jimmy Fallon bullshit yeah. and, of like. And- uh, of like just do it, just doing an inner you know a, a, a scheduled regular interview a sit down interview and that's what it's going to be because the media thing is just getting yeah. a bit ridiculous like i think there is some place for it but i don't know if it's totally fair to ask yeah, a guy like, before or after they won a loss or i'm fine know. with like weekly media days or something but like certain like yeah. and even in a sense like i like the podcast thing or like going on a podcast going out because then you're promoting someone else and at the same time i feel like the podcast will be more like more intimate you get to learn more about the player more about like how i guess the team works and all that in my opinion it's a more casual setting yeah like like hockey players do have personalities it's just because it's so routine all the time i mean it's also media. like they're taught to in hockey you're taught to like be just Sidney crosby just like I, i'm fine Con- with this and Connor like, mcdavid like well yeah you know, we'll get we'll yeah. get him next year yeah. yeah, it's just like we'll get them next year, and like I, the group of guys we have is great, and like you know, I you don't really get that on podcasts. You get to see like really, I mean, the spit and chick one does it the best. I and I, yeah. I think like with the like interviewing the players, I, you learn the most about anything. Um, what else? So what was I on before the Barzal thing? I just kind of like you talked about like, Barzal and Andy Green get not getting. Yeah, I was like, it's, it's kind of like comparable to St. Louis, Boston, in a sense where you got like, I mean, St. Louis, they had Bo Meester. How many more chances did he, did he was he gonna have? And Gordon like, Bennington probably wasn't gonna get a better chance after that. I mean, <laughs> especially the way he's been playing recently. But I mean, he had an amazing game seven. Um, yeah, I mean. It's kind of like that sense where like Boston's is big, big uh, like you know I got like Marsh and Pasta like Bergeron and then St. Louis you you know you got Tarasenko, you got these guys you got Petrangelo you got O'Reilly where like they're good but like Boston's another level, so I mean I think I think Montreal can do it in seven I I don't know if you I don't know I I just if they go down quick, if it's a 2-0, I don't think they can pull it back, in my opinion. I think it's too hard against this team. They might win one or two, but I don't think you can fully recover from that. Yeah. And like, like I said earlier, it's going to be a classic. It's going to be an instant yeah. classic. I, think, I honestly think it will be. And it's the first Stanley Cup with having fans back now after the pandemic. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of Montreal is going to be scammed out of this if they don't get like fans. They, they, I don't, in my opinion, I feel like it's dumb to have 50,000 people outside. And not and just have 2,500 inside uh, yeah. a arena of that stature has like world class ventilation systems. Okay, like it'll be fine in, in my opinion. Like having that many guys packed outside and, will be the and, same thing. Oh, I was gonna say, and if you're fully like, if the people coming in are fully vaccinated, yeah, or, and that uh, too. Like this, it, it's. I just don't think. I think it's just like. I mean, that's just the way Canada does it. I mean, yeah, we're uh, we're a bit more. Up. We're, we're a bit more conservative here. Like we'll have another, you know, probably safer summer compared to the States and then yeah. go back to normal. I, I think Alberta's opening up fully on the first and Saskatchewan. Well, the they're, well, they're, a the different, they're a different breed, Alberta. Yeah, but I, I think, I thought, like, I think Quebec's in a sense is a different breed, but uh, I mean, that, that's I mean you can better. see the fans. <laughs> you, you see the fans. I mean, lighting fireworks in the middle of the city. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I think the fans deserve it, especially Montreal fans, because th- that place. Imagine Bell Center right now, like it's the game three of the Stanley Cup Finals. There, it's like a one-one tie. Imagine, like imagine that place. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so just, just 
confirm and wrap this up uh, for this segment. Uh, so I'm taking the halves in six. Uh, Scott, you have the lightning in six. Lightning in six, and I hope I'm wrong. Lightning in six, you hope you're wrong. And then Rav has the halves in seven. All right.